Okay, this is a meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee, March 9th, 2021, 11.30 a.m. Um, we have a quorum. We have a lot of um, issues to cover. The first thing uh, on the agenda is uh, to talk about the Pomeroy West Street intersection. Then we have a request from the North Amherst Library. Um, and then we have a request for somebody from this committee to volunteer to work with Public Art Committee on accessibility. So those are the three things we're gonna try to get through. Um, and um, I think, do we and have anybody could you, do a, the, could you do a roll, oh, call? A roll call? I'm sorry. Um, people, do you wanna um, sort of, well, we can have a roll call. I, I can, yep. Or Elise? Here. Um, Ruth? If you're here, just say so. I think she is here. She is here. She is here. She's muted. Okay. She's here. Xander? Here. Uh, Tori? Here. Marty? Here. Ruth? Still here, still muted. She's <laughs> muted. Okay, you're muted, Ruth. Um, but we, everybody sees that you're here, so we'll say you're here and I'm here. So we have everybody, which is fabulous. Um, um, Ma Sarah, Madam, Sarah, Ma Sarah is here too. Oh, Sarah's here. Fabulous. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you yeah. so much yeah. for being here, Sarah, and I appreciate it. That's okay. Because I know you're not in town. Uh, uh, yeah. Mad Madam people? Chair. Yeah. I, I've never said that before. I like that. Madam <laughs> Chair, uh, we have uh, an architect <laughs> here uh, representing uh, the town um uh, chris farley who's uh the architect that's working with the town regarding the north amherst library and so i was wondering if we could have that item go first uh we could if we don't have anybody here for any other item um sure you want to give us uh uh we have the materials that you submitted that looks like you want to build an addition that will more than double the size of the library um and so if you could give us a quick presentation that might be a little bit more than what you put in One, your two, three, four, email. Five, six, seven. That would be great. Mr. Farley, are you uh, bail, Are you unmuted? I'm sorry, I, ah. I, I was not unmuted, thank you. Ah, okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, thanks very much for, uh, for letting me uh, talk about the project. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I'd be happy to give you a quick uh, kind of a five minute overview, uh, if that would be all right. Um, uh, okay, I guess I'd like you to put emphasis on um, the things that have to do with accessibility. Okay. Um, and I know because we know that the rest of the library has accessibility issues. So I was wondering how this has anything to do with that. And um, I guess there's a parking question that you put in the materials you sent us um, that you don't have space for enough spots. And I don't know what else um, the, the accessibility issues are. Okay. Well, so uh, we started working with the town a little over two years ago. Uh, and the, the primary uh, goal of this project is to make the library, the existing library accessible right now. Uh, the library is, is uh, the, the public part of the North Amherst Library is one floor and it's about four feet above grade. So the only way to get to the library is to go up a half a flight of stairs. So um, we, uh, the, one of the second goals of the project was to provide a community space, uh, a fully accessible community space uh, uh, for the library to be used uh, during uh, library hours and even after hours. And then a third goal was to provide accessible bathrooms uh, to the patrons and, uh, of the library. So what we proposed is a, an addition on the north side. Um, it, the, the existing library is about 920 square feet. Uh, the addition itself is, is just, a, just under 1200 square feet. So it doesn't quite double it, but it certainly is bigger than the existing library. Um, we are proposing a, a, a fully accessible uh, entry on the north side. And then, um, Maureen, can I, could I share my screen? Sure. Okay. 
And if you could just, uh, you know, of course you will, uh, but just keep in mind if you could um, explain what you are showing, um, showing with your mouse or whatever, th there are members that uh, have you visual bet. impairments. Yep, you bet. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, so the, uh, this image is just a, it's a, it's a photograph of the existing uh, front entry of the, of the library. There are about seven steps that go from the walkway up to the, uh, up to the first, uh, the, the main library level. Um, our proposal uh, is to, as I said, add an addition on the north side or the back of the library. Uh, that's also where the parking will be. Uh, we have two fully accessible parking spaces and an accessible route uh, going up to the new entry on, on, uh, on the back of the building. Uh, Can I just ask, accessible, accessible route from where? From the two accessible parking spaces. What about from the front of the building if somebody were to come on a bus in a wheelchair? So, so there, are, there are existing walkways around the property uh, and sidewalks, and uh, this new project connects with those existing sidewalks. So uh, from the front of the building back to the new accessible entry, uh, there's a fully accessible path. Uh, via the walkways and the existing public sidewalks. And the, 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 the grade is, vi the, is correct on those paths? Uh, yes, I believe the grade is correct. It, it's, um, well, I, 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 I have to say, I'm not sure, I, I, I can't confirm what, what that grade is off, off the top of my head, but I believe it's, it is, less than one to 20 uh, for all of those sidewalks. Okay, that would be good to know for sure. Okay, um, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely double check on that. People who use chairs, that is that okay? One, one yeah. to 20 seems like Myra, it is. It is. Yeah. Myra? Yeah. The issue is that those are sidewalks and sidewalks don't have, don't have to meet the, um, the grade requirements. Well, from the from the sidewalk to the back of the library, that the would have to be. Entrance. That's yeah. what I'm talking that would about. Have to. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Just wanted I... to clarify that a okay. sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I guess I wasn't by, clear. Is by definition exempt from those yeah, rules. No, no, I understand yeah. the sidewalks are, but I'm talking about the the pathway <laughs> from the sidewalk to the back of the library where the entrance that's accessible is. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know if a person came on a bus or was dropped off mm -hmm. in front of the library, could they get to the back of the library? They should be able to. Uh, the, yes, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. All of the, the, the walkways that are on this property that are being developed as part of this uh, addition are absolutely fully accessible. And okay. they are, okay. the, 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 the slope is, is less than uh, one in 20, uh, which is the requirement and the cross, cross cross slope of all those walkways will be one to 50 or less. And that okay. meets, okay. that meets the That's AAB good. requirements. Yeah, no tipping over good. sideways. Okay. And, and there will be a signage probably, right? Leading to the accessible entrance. Uh, there, there will be, um, uh, we, we will have, um, there, there will be a, uh, there will be a sign at the existing front entry, uh, at least as currently planned that will uh, uh, tell people that the new entry to the building is around the back and there will be signage to, to help people navigate toward that back entry. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Um, so uh, once, once uh, someone goes in this, uh, the, the new front entry, there's a, a lobby area. Off to one side, there are two fully accessible bathrooms. Uh, off to the other side, there is a meeting room, uh, which can accommodate up to 49 people. Uh, from the entry lobby, uh, if, if, if a person were to continue uh, toward the library, there's a space that we call the connector. And in that connector, there is a wheelchair lift uh, that will take people from the lower level uh, of, the, of, the new of the new addition up to the level of the main library. There's also a set of stairs uh, that, that, that um, goes up to that 
uh, to that uh, main library level. Uh, in the main library, we, we don't anticipate uh, or we anticipate very few modifications to the existing stacks. Um, all the all the existing stacks uh, are accessible per uh, section 12 of the AAB regulations. We will have a new uh, library desk and that will be uh, that will have an, ex an accessible transaction area uh, associated with it. Um, uh, let's see, what else can I say? Um, I think that pretty much covers all the accessibility upgrades and, and features of, of, of the building and, and the new addition. So there is yeah. no, no set, no ramp, nothing, no change to the inaccessible entrance in the front at all? Uh, there, uh, as part of the current proposal, there is not. Um, we did not want to compromise the integrity of the existing building uh, by trying to add a, a ramp or a lift there. And so we... Oh, so, sorry, Chris. I uh, muted you by accident. I was trying to mute someone else. Sorry. You can unmute yourself. Wait, okay. Uh, I, go I, ahead. Sorry, I, I, sorry. I unmuted myself. Sorry. There was some chatter um, from someone else and I, I yeah. picked the wrong person, sorry. So yes, we, we, we imagine that that existing front entry will remain as an egress, but not as an entry. Uh, currently, we are planning everyone to come through the, the new entry as part of the North Edition. Um, I have been told that uh, there is a possibility that we may be going to uh, the AAB um, to ask for a variance to allow that that front entry to remain as an entry, uh, but it would not be an accessible entry. So uh, anybody uh, requiring an accessible entry would need to come in through the, the north end, um, through the new addition. How do uh, members feel about that? About if, if uh, the town were to um, wanna use the south door as a entrance, so for entering and exiting, um, how do you feel if, if the applicant um, goes through that variance request? Um, and so uh, um, Chris Parley had said that, uh, you know, they would want to keep the architectural integrity of that. And so that I don't think a ramp would be, would be proposed. And so, and th therefore a variance request um, would be required. Am I to understand, am I a of correct and understanding that there is currently not an accessible entrance at all. So this there, creates the one accessible entrance. That, that's exactly right. The, the, the this is okay. the only the, the 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 entry in the photograph that I'm showing. This is the only way into the library currently. Right. So that's why I have never been in this library. I have never been in this building. Yeah. Right. No, that's um, that's. And that is the whole purpose of this project, that one of the main functions of this project is to make the library accessible. I have a question. It, yeah. it looks, Oops. go ahead. Sorry, um, I had my hand up, but I, <laughs> um, that, that's the only way in, and that's also the only way out, right? That's, that's correct. the only exit. Yes, currently. Okay. I'm just, I'm thinking, you know, usually buildings have more than one, you know, I guess, okay. And one other, okay, my other question doesn't have anything to do with the exit and entrance, so I'm gonna leave it. Thanks. I have a Sorry. question. Oh, Sarah. Okay, okay. okay. Um, uh, about once we get into the meeting space, because it seems like it is level, then to go up to the library, you have to get on the stair lift. So how is the stair lift operated? Is there a person that will come with their key and unlock it and put you and zip you up? So the, uh, no, the, uh, the wheelchair lift, it's a, it's a platform lift. Uh, yes. And it will, it will be able to be operated by the, by the user. Uh, it's got a, it's got a, a, a gate that opens uh, and then yeah. there's a button to be pushed to go up to the library level and then a gate uh, that that opens at the at the library level. So it's 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 not uh, it's not there, there's no assistance required. The, the 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 person who needs the lift can operate it and use it by themselves. 
and is the lift wide enough that the disabled persons attendant can also go up together? Uh, the, the intent is uh, uh, that the, I think the width is, uh, I believe it's 36 inches wide, but I believe the, uh, the depth of the platform is 60 inches. So there, there is room for someone to be able to stand behind a wheelchair, the attendant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because some people might not be able to operate um, the lift themselves. So they might need somebody to push the button and help them open and close the door. Right. Okay. Well, I, I will say also that the, that the lift um, is is just uh, just about ten feet away from where the librarian's desk is. Uh, my mm -hmm. guess is that uh, when the library is open, if somebody does need assistance, it would be easy for the librarian to come and assist. So, is there any way that there could be some a bell attached mm -hmm. that you can ask the uh, librarian to assist if the person is on their own? Uh, you know what? That's a that's an excellent question and a, and a good idea. We don't currently have a a, a bell or a, or a, a buzzer, but uh, that would be something that would be very easy to include in the project. Good, right? That might be helpful. Yep. Thank you. And then my question about it is: is the lift? I assume is electric electric in its operation. Uh, it, it it is. It, it's a hydraulic yeah. lift, but it uses electricity to to. Uh, to work so to function. Piggybacking on Elisa's question, um, if someone is in the library and there is a power failure, can they get out? Is there a battery backup that could be you, that that these lifts come with? Because it doesn't have to be a fire that involves firefighters, but that would still be a long time for them to get there. How would somebody get out if the hydraulic lift electricity is out yeah i was kind of getting getting that that's where i figured question. you were going <laughs> my 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 a generator memory, might be a good idea my memory uh from the uh from the specifications of this hydraulic lift is that if the power does go out the lift will uh will come back down to the to the ground level by gravity uh and stop at that at that lower level, and then the door itself is not doesn't require any uh, electricity. So I think someone would be able to get get out at that lower level, which is the exit level, the accessible exit level uh, through the new addition. So that it goes down when the power goes out, or it goes down when somebody gets in it. No, it goes down if 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 someone is on the lift in the lift when the power goes out. Uh, the lift can be programmed to go down to that primary level where they can then get 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 off the okay. lift. And if someone well, isn't yet on the lift when the power goes out, like someone's just in the library being a Somebody. patron, and then yeah. the electricity goes out, how do they get out? Uh, um, I think that they well, there 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 are two there are two uh, ways that that would happen. Uh, they'd either have to wait for someone to come and assist them uh, because the lift is the only way uh, for, for someone in a wheelchair to, to get out of the building. Um, mm. There's a little lobby in, inside the existing front entry um, and, and uh, that could function as a, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank on the name, uh, uh, an area place of, of refuge. A place of refuge, area of refuge. Thank you very much. That's what I was looking <laughs> for. We can, we, uh, I've been thinking about this and uh, the size and location of that area would function very well as an area of refuge. So it's possible um, that in an emergency, if someone's not able to utilize the lift to get down to the lower level and out of the building, they could be uh, sequestered in this area of refuge. Or could you look consider installing a generator, which will solve all these problems? And they're not that that expensive. Um, I, I will certainly 
I will certainly look into that. Um, I don't know what the electrical requirements uh, are of the lift, but I, my guess is that they aren't terribly great. So it's yeah. possible that we may be able to provide emergency power for the lift. I really yeah, second yeah. that. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah it's a, no, that, it's a that, great idea. I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we so far we would like you to put in a buzzer or a bell and a generator. And does anybody have any concerns about the only 10 parking spaces instead of the 25 that the town requires? As long, uh, I mean, how many of them need to be, um, if there were 25, how many of them would need to accommodate handicapped vehicles? I, I, be, I believe that even if we were to provide 25, I, I think we would only be required to have two spaces, which is the, which is the number that we have now uh, as part of our proposal. Could okay. one of these wheelchair accessible places be then accessible? Yes. Great. Great. Chris, okay. I have a question about the meeting room. Uh, are yeah. you, uh, does this scope of work include um, devices, uh, like uh, hearing devices? Oh, good question. Assisted lift listening uh, devices? Yeah, assisted yeah. devices. Um, currently, um, because the, the occupancy of this meeting room is less than 50, the, the code doesn't require it. So it, we don't have that as part of our, our current scope. Um, so I, I, I guess the short answer is no, it's not currently included. How do you figure 48 instead of 50? Well, uh, there's a couple of reasons. One is the, the, the size of the room uh, really doesn't, um, does, you know, doesn't, doesn't support a larger number. Uh, the other thing is that this is an, an assembly use for this space. And once we get up to 50 or more, we have to provide a separate ent entry directly out of the building, out of the room to the outside. Um, and I think as part of this project, we, we wanted to try to avoid having to, uh, to do, have that additional uh, egress out of the space. Um, uh, and and I, because of the because of the the nature of the project, uh, I think that there wasn't a requirement that we had we had more than uh, 50, 50 people be able to gather in this space. Why did they want no egress? I'm just curious. It's just an additional cost that we were trying to avoid. We we wanted to provide the meeting room. Uh, but it didn't seem necessary to, uh, to make the, the meeting room so big that we, we would be required to have that additional egress, that additional door. Uh, Marty Smith is indicated you'd like to oh, cool. okay. talk? Yeah, um, I have a couple of things to say. The first one is regarding the front entrance. My experience has been that the, um, that the AAB, if you're going to ask a variance to, sorry about that, I have dogs. If you're going to have a variance to, to not make the front entrance accessible, it's highly likely that the board will come back and tell you that that needs to be an exit only door. So it's not the main entrance to the library anymore. Just, just saying it. And that solves okay. the problem of inequality also. Yep by doing that. So everyone is expected to enter through the new addition. Chris, can you go back to the plan, please? Sure. Uh, Marty, can I ask you a question? So are you saying that the MAAB would likely tell the applicant to make that an exit only? Yes, I had that happen to me in a similar situation. Now, was that based on comments from uh, a local disability committee or was that no. based? That was based on between the building inspector and the board. I, I, I will say that my understanding of uh, universal access and, and um, the AAB is that uh, the intent is that everybody goes through one main entry. There, yeah. are, there aren't some people who can go through one and some people who have to go to another. Yeah. Uh, that, that's not an equal 
access. So, so that's why it, in, our, in our current plan, we do have everyone going through the north entry, the new entry. Yeah. So um, this is gonna get really nitpicky, but it's important because I've run into it many times. Um, your hallway to the restrooms is four foot two inches wide. So think about coming from the library, I mean, from the entry lobby. So I wanna go into the first um, restroom. The problem is the pull side of the door is facing me. If I'm in a wheelchair, I don't have enough room to get back and then get into this door because I can't turn around. Again, please, you're not the hallway is only four foot two inches. That's a very good point. Thank, th thank you for pointing that out. I think that's quite this honestly. Is, that's this is a really tricky problem. People yep. don't, you know, most people, except yeah. for architects who do this all the time, don't realize that door swings are a real problem. I'd also like to recommend that when you solve that problem, that that door, well, it's not gonna work anyway because you can't do 180 degrees to get that door out of the way to get past it. It's, it's something you're gonna have to figure out. And then the mm. last thing, if you go back to the, uh, the original entry to the, to the library, I think, and I don't have any dimensions to, to verify it, but given the doors and the size of the doors in that existing entry, I don't think you've got enough room for a, an area of refuge because once you get a wheelchair in there, you're not gonna have enough room to open the door to get them out. So I, I think uh, that's, a, that's a, a very good observation. I, I think what's happening here is you see off to the right of that existing yeah. door, there's a, there's a very narrow stairway. Mm -hmm. That stairway is being removed. Oh, awesome. That's Great. So That'll I solve think, it. So that would become the area of rescue uh, refuge yeah. right there. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's that's good. I I thought that was going on. Other than that, I think it looks great. I think it's going to be a great addition to our library. Um, uh, Marty, can I ask you a question or ask sure. all of you a question? If we did provide emergency power uh, for the lift, the wheelchair lift, so that in an emergency, uh, somebody could get from the library level down to the to the lower level. Um, is it? Do you would you still want to see that area of refuge? Personally, I'm a wheelchair user, and I don't think it is necessary. But I don't know. Maybe some place in the law that might require it. That I don't know. I, was, I think it's. I would say yes because but that's maybe my based on my experience with Amherst Fire Department they don't like coming and getting people who are in wheelchairs unless there is an actual fire um, I have been left in buildings in areas of refuge in the high school multiple times in the dorms in at UMass multiple times um, and the plan if I go back to work and I'm on a floor that doesn't that doesn't have an, an access to the outside, I'm to wait uh, until they give the all clear. So you might run into a problem with the AFD's um, protocols related to removing people in wheelchairs without a place of refuge. I Can see. I give okay. a little perspective to this, Chris? Um, if you put that wheelchair lift on a generator, if we put a generator in here, Yep. You're going to have to put all of the fire, um, the alarm system on a, on a generator. I don't think you're sprinkling this, so you wouldn't have to put the fire pump on a generator. But one of the problems I think we're going to run into is I have a sneaking suspicion that the electrical code requires that all vertical um, lifts as elevators or lifts cannot operate during when there's a fire alarm on. Everybody needs to remember that. All of those kinds uh, of things shut down when the fire alarm, there's always a, an automatic fire alarm switch. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. so 
so don't get too hung up on this generator because it may either price us out or it may be a moot point because the code requires that it be um, switched off once the alarm system goes on. That's uh, that's a that's a good that's a good point. I will look a little more deeply into that. I, I'm not sure if the I, I know that's true of elevators. I'm I wasn't sure if that was true of lifts because of they're lifts. fundamentally different. They're still vertical. Still still vertical access devices. Yes. Yeah. No, that, that's a that's a that's a very good point, Marty. I'll, I'll take a closer look at that. Yeah. The only reason I know that is because I just put lifts in Mahar at UMass and they are, they don't work when the fire alarm system goes off. I see, okay. But, so the, but the place doesn't of, it work? I think, I think it works down. You it may not be able to get up. into it. It requires power no. to get into it. <laughs> I, yeah. I will I will definitely look into this yeah. more closely to understand mm -hmm. what the uh, what's what's permitted uh, whether the use of the lift is permitted or not during an emergency and um, Xander I will also uh, I'll look a little more deeply into the area of refuge question uh, I think as part of this project we will be reviewing it with the Amherst fire department uh, so we can review with them their protocols as well I mean, reviewing, yeah, I was going to say, reviewing the Amherst Fire Department's protocols about people in wheelchairs might be something that this committee or <laughs> people should start thinking about because it's really, really problematic that their attitude is just, well, if, unless it's a real emergency, we're not going to come and get you. That's a different kind of problem. Right. Definitely. Uh, no, yeah. your, point, your point is well taken. Thank you. That's why I wish you could get down a lift on your own. Especially for somebody who has a sensory processing disorder who got stuck in the high school. Every single time, I was in the high school for three years and every single time they had a fire drill, I managed to be on the only floor, three floors that you couldn't get out of. Wow. It looks like Tori, I don't know if uh, these are old hands being raised, but Tori, did you want to say something? Well, Sarin brought up the buzzer. I was going to say that as well. I think that's very important to have the buzzer on the lift mm -hmm. um, in case someone needs assistance and doesn't have someone else with them. Um, and the other thing is, I know we need a place of refuge. I personally, if it's not a fire, if it's only a power outage, I would prefer to be able to go down the lift rather than wait in a place of refuge for the fire That's department. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can ask for variants. <laughs> no, we true. can. It's, you know, if it's a fire, it's one thing, but if it's just a power failure, you should be able to get out without panic. That's right. Without, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I believe that's true, as I said. I think, um, well, here's the thing. If the, if the wheelchair lift uh, if the platform uh, was up at the library level at the time of power outage, I think you could still get into it and it would come down because it's hydraulic. Uh, it, could, it would come down to the lower level. But in a power outage, if it's at the lower level and, you're, and someone in a wheelchair is on the upper level, you wouldn't be able to get access to it. Chris, if you don't right. have power, I don't think you can open the gate to get on the lift because it's an electronic lock. Oh, uh, Marty, you might be right. I'll look into I, that I'm, as well. I've just installed like four of these. Well, okay, then, uh, we... then <laughs> you, pr you probably know, you probably are, are more familiar than I am. Um, Elise, did you uh, want to comment? You have raised your hand. Uh, no, I don't. I'm, if I did, it was by mistake. Okay, uh, and yeah. uh, uh, Chris Brestrup, who's the planning director has raised her hand. Hello, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Um, I had uh, two comments for now. Um, one is that the building commissioner has suggested that um, the team that's designing the building might want to apply for- I'm at the meeting. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. 
Um, so the building commissioner has uh, recommended that it might be a good idea to apply for a variance from the AAB for that um, front entry because this is a historic building and the AAB might be willing to grant um, a variance to allow people to come in and out of that entrance. So I'm just making that as a statement. I'm not um, supporting that one way or another, but that's, that's what the building commissioner thought. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention, and I'm not sure that everyone is aware of this, is that um, the addition and the new work that's going to be done here is going to be paid for by an anonymous donor. Um, the, the, the amount of money that was set aside for uh, design and the feasibility study and the design was voted by town meeting, and that was about $50,000. Any construction work that's going to be done here will be paid for by an anonymous donor. So um, just keep that in mind that it's not the town that's paying, it's this anonymous donor. So that's another point of information that I just wanted to offer. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And uh, Marty, did you uh, raise your hand? No, I oh, okay. I'll, lo I'll lower it. <laughs> lower it, please. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, that's an interesting question about the, uh, I mean, I understand Marty, you are very well aware of the rules about the, uh, the lift. Um, <laughs> but I guess our wheelchair users have brought, uh, I think they've maybe made some suggestions that we might wanna refer over to the AAB for when there isn't a fire when whether a generator could be used to get people out of the building. Um, that's going to be from the that's going to be from the elevator board. The elevator board. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's an electrical and elevator board, board issue. Well, <laughs> yeah. wow. I, you know, but I think there is a big difference between a fire danger and a power failure. Oh, I agree with you. I'm <laughs> you know, not going to. You know, we do have power it. failure. I totally agree with you. Okay, so maybe well, I don't know if you, Marty, would you be willing to, you know, risks, you know, sort of drafting a, a letter of of a request for them to change or consider changing their policies, or do you feel like you're too close to it? But I think that the the questions brought up here are good questions. Well, I think the first thing is Chris needs to um, to find out what the rules are. I'm just working from what I know from my experience, but Chris needs to find out, A, if it's possible to put it on a generator when the fire alarm is not, op is not operating. And the second thing is he needs to find out what in the building has to be added to that generator because that's where your cost is gonna be. It's not just putting a little plug-in generator for that lift. It's probably going to mean you're going to have to power the fire alarm system with that generator. And it's going to have to be a standby generator. So you've got transfer switches. It's really, it's not like a little generator at home. It's, you know, I it, have one in my backyard. It's on the, it's on the, the, the gas line and it turns itself on automatically. So I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but, but I, a commercial one's yeah. a little different than what you have in your home. And okay. I don't believe that this is going to be on a gas line. So you're looking at a diesel generator. Uh, I don't, or, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of issues that go okay. into generators. Okay, <laughs> okay. so, so it sounds like Chris, Chris Farley will yeah. do his yeah. due diligence about okay. that topic. I, I have some research to do, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. sorry, Chris. No, and then no. I guess that bell we're That's talking right. about shouldn't be electric either. It should just be a bell. <laughs> Well, that's that's easy enough for that, that can be a wireless battery operated right. device. It doesn't have to be an electric device. Right. And well, it looks like well, Tori okay. has raised her hand again. Tori, did you? Oh, you're muted, Tori. Um, let me see. I didn't mean to. I thought I I thought I unraised my hand. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, while you're doing this, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, while you're doing the research, if you find something, you discover some regulations set there, which doesn't make sense, you know, because if there's a generator, I don't want to be stuck upstairs waiting for somebody to come and rescue or put, 
do something. You know, if you think that it doesn't make sense, please let us know. We'll do some advocacy to make those laws reconsidered and changed. Yes. Because we have enough experience living under the hazardous situations. So yes. maybe we can have some input in the change. Okay, this is good. So are, Chris, are you gonna come, yes. are you, are you come back to us, Chris, with any of this? I, I guess I would, I would say, um, well, let's see, we, we just finished up our schematic design drawing set. Uh, once we get all of our town approvals uh, and permits, which is gonna be in probably a, uh, in a couple of months, we're gonna go into the next design phase and that's when we would be addressing all of these issues. Um, mm -hmm. I would be happy to come back before you uh, once we have done our research and looked into all these issues and I can give you an update as to where we stand with everything. I think that would be great, Perfect. thank you. Yeah, okay. thank yeah, you. That's great, yeah, it, thank it, you. It probably, it probably will not be, as I said, probably won't be for, for gosh, I would say, three months but it's fine. um i can i can put a note on my schedule and uh i can coordinate with maureen on on getting on uh on the agenda for 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 uh your meeting in, in okay. three, mo three months or so okay excellent all right all it right it sounds like um so uh in the meanwhile just to recap uh you know i don't i don't even know if i need to recap but it you know it, um the two issues is you know about the generator and um to have a, a bell or wireless buzzer uh, for the lift and it seems that that those were the two items um did did the bo i asked this before but uh did the board want to weigh in uh about uh opinions um about whether the town did would pursue a variance for the self door uh, you, you, you know you, you can uh weigh the in variance would be for them to allow it to be an entrance correct which well, is the it south does door is the... it the one with the steps correct yes. there's like how many steps are there chris i believe there's seven seven steps so the way it's going to be is that it would close down as an entrance unless the town gets a variance to keep it an entrance. That's Correct. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. So what do people think? I have no problem with it. Who, who just keeping said that? that Saren said Saren. that? So you yeah, have, no, I have Saren. No, no problem with keeping it as another entrance. I don't have, you know, just because I cannot use the that door myself, that I have no problem with it. Tori, Xander? I don't either. Yeah, I have no, as long as I can get into the building, I've never, Okay, you know, that's fine with me. So uh, Saren, Tori, Xander, uh, who else has no problem? Or who, I, uh, uh, if they least. don't, I don't. And it's historical. So you, I mean, it's a historical um, door. So entrance, so that's um exempt anyway isn't it because it's not no. uh because uh why is it because um i forget is it because the 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 price of the oh, assessed oh, price oh. okay yes that, i forgot about that well yeah. we, we we have uh, the, the cost of this project uh is well over the 30 percent threshold for full compliance um, I, I think, uh, Maureen, what, what you're saying uh, is that, and I think it makes sense, is because of the historical nature of the building, that would be an argument we would use if we went for a variance to the AAB to allow this uh, entry to still remain functional. But obviously, we would also be providing the fully accessible entry uh, on the north side uh, of the building. So um, yeah. we, I, I, I will talk with the town more about that. Uh, and see if it makes sense for us to to go uh, and ask for a variance uh, uh, for that entry. And I can I can report back to you uh, when when I come back in, a, in in three months. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All Great. Right. Uh, I don't know if we need a if you guys need to make a motion or anything. Um, well, they didn't ask 
podcast. About um, do you guys want to give a po- uh, like a positive or a negative recommendation with your suggestions? My my hunch is it's a positive recommendation. Okay. With I, the- I'll make a motion that um, we have. They didn't ask for anything, but that that we approve the thus far the plan for the North Hammers Library with the stipulations that we want uh, a bell on the um, lift and investig- a serious investigation of a generator to operate the lift in a power failure. And uh, would you as a board want to make a recommendation that, that the applicant seek a variance request uh, for the self door to make that a full, um, uh, uh, to re- Oh. maintain that as an entrance door another sure yeah if sure. the wheelchair users don't mind i think that's fine if yeah. they mind it i wouldn't okay uh i guess i think just, yeah. i think we should also add a note of thank you to the anonymous donor <laughs> to make that facility accessible for those of us that didn't get a chance to go to that library so that's a big input I think what they're doing. Absolutely. I'm so, so excited to have a library I can walk to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that library is walking distance from my apartment and it would be so, uh-huh. and I look at it and I drive past it and I'm just like, that would be so nice to be able to walk and go to the library, but I can't, cause I yeah. can't get into the stupid building. And you can building. go to the meeting room yeah. more than that. So. Yeah, yeah. The meeting uh, room, really the, good. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so do we have a unanimous vote on this? Uh, well, yes. uh, one, one moment, uh, Marty raised, yeah, I, did- I raised my hand. Just, um, do you want to go ahead and, and make a motion that we um, approve the variance request to use the front door, the existing front door as a, continue using it as a front door? Because uh, Chris is going to need that when he goes for the barrier. Yeah, yeah uh, that's really what the motion us be. That hassle. That's what so the I make a motion that that the board support uh, the variance request for utilizing the original front door to continue utilizing the original front door as an entrance to the library. That I was second that motion. Having to come back for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Marty. I second. I second Marty's yeah. motion. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. We should roll Agreed. call it. Uh, so, uh, Marty. Yes. Okay, uh, Tori? Yes. Uh, Xander? Yes. Elise? Yes. Uh, Ruth? Hmm. Ruth's, um, well. She's here. Uh, Ruth, could you email me your response? <laughs> um, Saren? Yes. And Myra? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. This is good. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris, for attending today's meeting. And yeah, well, thank you, thank you for inviting me. It's uh, it's been really very helpful to have your review and your comments. And uh, I look forward to uh, meeting with you uh, once we've addressed some of these things to give you an update. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. All right. Now we have to move over to the um, request by the town. Um, the TSO, Town Services, uh, or TSC, or whatever they call themselves, they would like an opinion from this committee about um, what we think uh, about the potential, about the change, or about the um, renovation of the intersection at West Pomeroy, Pomeroy, and West Street. Um, The question is, do they want an enhanced what do they call it? An enhanced pedestrian, an enhanced signalized intersection or a roundabout. And there is a PowerPoint that I have, but I don't know if you ever sent it to the committee. He did. He did. did. I couldn't okay. open it. I Aww. tried many times. Oh, I'm My sorry. My screen was just blank. Huh. I'm sorry. But I, I looked at on the town, uh, town of Amherst site and there were some um, points there the benefits and so forth what they were doing with maps i looked only those looked at those okay so i think our job as a committee is to 
we can't choose what they're going to do. That's going to be a, a committee. Uh, the town council is going to choose what they're going to do. But from an accessibility standpoint, I think we have to choose or we have to tell them what we think um, is safe and good for people with disabilities for them to incorporate into their design. So I think, um, I mean, it's such a complicated topic, but I think for this committee, we have to leave it at accessibility. Uh, Myra, so yeah. I've been speaking with staff and about this project and uh, the TSO, which is a subcommittee of the town council, I initially wanted to have board, town boards and committees to provide comments by, I'm, I can't remember, by April 3rd. Um, and uh, the TSO is actually now saying, you know what, let's, let's not rush this. And we'd rather hear boards and committees first talk about what do they think about the intersection, the, the existing conditions of the intersection um, what are the thoughts about that? And then what would you like to see done to make improvements to that intersection? And after that discussion, and that could be the sole purpose of today's meeting, uh, and, um, and the TSO, you know, will eventually want to hear about, you know, about the opinions about the two design alternatives but at, at this moment I, I i'm being told that they would rather uh slow down and, and start start um it's, it kind of feels like a, the cart before the horse of well what do you think of the current conditions now and what sorts of improvements would you like to uh see there and we have uh christine breastrup the planning director uh who uh is working with the uh with uh, the DPW and the town manager's office regarding this project and, and, and is working with outreach strategies. So let me um, have Chris talk. Okay. Hello, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, so we have a, a slideshow we can run through pretty quickly just to give you a sense of what the overall idea is. And um, that might kind of help to set the tone for what you, um, we'll be talking about. But basically what we want to know is if there's anything you like about this intersection, which there may or may not be, um, what you think the problems are and what you would like to see done there to make it a better place. Um, and obviously navigation is uh, the main topic here. So um, I'm just going to run through this slideshow quickly. This was a slideshow that was presented to the um, town council back in January. So here we're looking at a map for those of you who can um, visually see this. It's the intersection of Route 116 and Pomeroy Lane. It's where Mission Cantina is. Um, there's a Valley Transporter building there. The Montessori School is located there and there are a number of other um, retail establishments. So it's sort of a vital commercial center for us. There's also a mix of residential properties. There's a, a small subdivision nearby, um, the Pomeroy Court uh, co-op housing is there. Um, there's a, a condominium that's just south of the intersection. Um, it's also, you know, pretty centrally located near Hampshire College and the Eric Carle Museum and the Hitchcock Center and the Yiddish Book Center. So it's um, it's a it's on a major artery traveling from the downtown to the south, connecting the center of Amherst with South Hadley and Point South. So next slide, please. Um, and it does have its challenges. It's, um, it's undeveloped in terms of its infrastructure. The sidewalks are very narrow. There aren't any um, formal curb cuts. Um, so there's poor pedestrian access, poor access for um, people in wheelchairs, for bicyclists, et cetera. Um, I don't think there are any um, uh, manually operated um, crossings uh, because there aren't any there aren't really any crosswalks here so it's really um, a problem area but it's a growing area there are there are a lot of things happening here there's you know lots of little stores um, El Comolito restaurant is there and you know it's kind of a, a growing place next slide please so this kind of shows this map here is a map from the Amherst master plan which shows um, Pomeroy village in context of the town 
So it's about, um, it's in the lower third, the southern third of the town. It's one of um, several um, village centers that we consider like North Amherst Village Center and um, the Atkins Corner Village Center and Pomeroy Lane Village Center is also one of our village centers. Next slide, please. Um, so the town recently was awarded $1.5 million from the state to make improvements to this intersection. And we wanna focus on, um, of course, traffic because there's a lot of traffic that goes through there, car traffic, but there are also bicycles and pedestrians. There are children who cross the street from the Montessori school. There are also children who cross the street to get on buses. Um, uh, we're working on this in collaboration with the Department of Public Works and the planning department and the DPW have actually been working on this project since about, I'm gonna say 2004 or 2005. It was one of the first projects I started working on when I came here. Next slide, please. Um, so we, we also wanna think about um, access to the Hickory Ridge Golf Course, which the town is planning to uh, purchase. Um, and that's going to be um, an open space for, for users of, of the town um, the parks and, and recreation areas. Um, there's probably gonna be a, a big um, solar um, installation there. And there's also a front part of the property that could be used for various things like affordable housing or there are a number of different possible uses. So that's just down the road. Um, there are also um, opportunities for bike and pedestrian access to the new property. Um, we have a, a few issues related to wetlands um, towards the west and the east, so we can't really go too far in westerly or easterly direction. So for now, we're combining our work to the exact um, intersection, but eventually we want to provide access to the Curry Ridge Golf Course and probably eventually to the South Amherst Common, which is where the Munson Library is. Um, so here is a map showing um, what this intersection looked like back in 1830. Um, it's the intersection of you know, West Street and Pomeroy Lane. And the building that's shown here in this picture was built in um, 1830. And it was, uh, you know, it's a beautiful old house that's been um, renovated into offices. Next slide, please. Um, so this again shows, this map here shows Pomeroy Lane intersection um, in context with the rest of the town. Um, next slide, please. Um, here is a map showing the different residential uses around, uh, around the area. There's a Carriage Lane neighborhood, Orchard Valley, um, Pomeroy Village Center Co-op, which I already talked about. The Crocker Farm School is nearby and within walking distance. And there are also the um, um, developments along East Hadley Road, which include apartment complexes, as well as some subdivisions. Next slide, please. Um, I don't think there's too much to talk about here other than, oh, there is um, what we consider an environmental justice population, meaning people of low income who live in the East Hadley Road area. And eventually we'd like to provide um, better access for them to get to the, um, to the shopping areas in, in this intersection. Next slide, please. Um, so here that we're seeing the project site, we're seeing it in context with um, Taylor Davis landscape is to the west, um, Amherst Office Park, which is owned by Ron Lavertier and his family is to the north. There's a gas station there. There's also a house of worship, the Kingdom Hall of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Amherst Montessori School, and a couple of um, office buildings, as well as the well-loved Mission Cantina restaurant. Next slide, please. And this shows the housing that I've been talking about. Next slide, please. So uh, as I said, this project has a long history. Back in the 1990s, um, the Mass Department of Transportation developed a design for the uh, intersection, but it was considered to be way overblown. It was um, you know, very wide lanes and not much concentration on pedestrian access and just kind of making this more of a highway than it really deserves to be. And Amherst decided that we wanted to have control over what went on in this intersection and make it more of a village center. So um, at some point along the line, the town uh, actually took the, uh, the road from the state or the state gave the road to the town. Um, and so we now own Route 116 or West Street all the way from the center of town 
down to uh, Country Corners um, subdivision, which is a little bit south of the Atkins Market. Um, so we've had a number of tries at making this making improvements here. We installed traffic signals in 2004. Then uh, several years later, um, the planning department and the DPW um, worked on a design and we did apply for a mass works grant back in 2013 uh, for a slightly larger project, but we were unsuccessful at that time. But this year, or actually last year, 2020, we did receive the, um, the grant for uh, $1.5 million. So we're really happy with that and very thrilled to be able to make these um, improvements. So these photographs just show some of the kind of dreary aspects to this um, intersection. It's really not pedestrian friendly. It's kind of wide open. It's really dedicated to the cars. There are no bike lanes, lack of sidewalks, et cetera. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is just, you can just flip through these last few slides, looking south, looking north, looking east, looking west. It doesn't look like it's a very inviting place to be. Um, so we have to make a choice. The town council has to make a choice as to whether they want to build um, an enhanced signalized intersection, which means the kind of intersection that we're all used to with, um, with light poles and traffic lights and pedestrian um, activated buttons for crossing or whether we wanna uh, have a roundabout here. And as Saren, uh, excuse me, not Saren, but um, as Myra has been telling us, there are opportunities with a roundabout design uh, that we can add um, some degree of uh, pedestrian activated signals, um, but that would, be, that would come later. So this, um, this plan here shows the signalized intersection, it's, it's kind of hard to read, but it's basically just, you know, West Street stays where West Street is, Pomeroy Lane stays where Pomeroy Lane is. There are left turn lanes added, both north and southbound on West Street. Um, traffic signals added. There would be pedestrian activated signals here. There would be crosswalks. Um, some of the sidewalks would be extended, particularly down Pomeroy Lane in the easterly direction and West Street in a southerly and northerly direction. I don't think there's enough room yet to um, install sidewalks on Pomeroy Lane westbound, but we'd also want to put in bike lanes and um, obviously crosswalks and curb ramps. Next slide, please. So this slide shows uh, the placement of what could be a roundabout. It's not really a very refined drawing, but as you can see, it would be a one lane roundabout um, and it could have some pedestrian activated signals if that were part of the design. Um, it, this plan shows uh, bike lanes and crosswalks, et cetera. Um, but as I said, neither plan has been refined to a great degree. Next slide, please. So um, the council has a lot of things to think about. They have to think about pedestrian and bicycle safety and access, bus accommodations, um, accommodations for people with disabilities, um, trying to make this look like a, a nice um, village center, which might mean adding benches and trees and things like that. Um, what are the costs? What, we, what can we get done for $1.5 million? And what are some of the impacts on the businesses and the residences nearby? And next slide, please. Um, so let's see, we have a project cost of, we, we estimated that it was gonna be about $1.6 Five million dollars. We have a mass works, works grant of 1.5 million, and the town is uh, putting in town staff time, engineering planning, and oversight for the to the tune of about 158 thousand um, dollars. Next slide, please. Um, so we can probably just skip through the rest of this. I'm I'm not sure if there's um, much here, but essentially what we need to do is give the town services and outreach committee um, some information um, about what people think is, like I said before, is good about this intersection, isn't good, um, you know, what would you like to see changed? And then that will help the town services and outreach and the town council eventually to come to a conclusion about whether this should be a signalized intersection or a roundabout. So um, we're really looking for your ideas, your concerns, your comments, and um, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Tori okay. has raised First, 
first of all, I really want to say I'm so glad to see that this is going to be happening. I used to live in this area and it wasn't safe to uh, walk around there. And not enough sidewalks, as you said, and um, just crossing the street there between Pomeroy and West Pomeroy is very dangerous um, as it is now. So I'm just very happy to see that it's happening. Um, I have a question about if, if you do a roundabout. I've, I've seen people in town, even though there's yield signs and they go too fast around the roundabouts, um, even though they're not supposed to. And that's just um, a concern. So I don't, are you planning on putting, is it more than yield signs or will there be like actual stop signs or, or traffic lights incorporated there with this so people would actually, actually come to a stop? So. There won't be stop signs, but there could be traffic, um, traffic act, um, pedestrian activated traffic um, devices that could let uh, someone who is visually impaired or somebody who, you know, has a um, mobility issue to stop traffic long enough to cross the road. But that hasn't been fully incorporated yet into the design because the design hasn't really been um, developed yet. So if that's something that you would like to see, and I know Myra has been talking about this ever since we've, you know, int introduced this project, you know, that would be something that you could say that you'd like to see those, those devices incorporated. Um, but as far as um, the speed, I do know that people drive, they tend to drive faster than they should around the roundabouts. And um, they're supposed to be designed to slow people down. They have a kind of an entry point that kind of forces people to go from 40 miles an hour or whatever they're doing down to, you know, they're supposed to be going like 15 or 20 through the roundabout. That doesn't always happen. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to make that a, a point that people here are concerned about the speed at which people drive through the roundabouts. Thank you. Uh, Xander yeah. has uh, raised your hand. Um, so the speed thing, I, I mean, there's a roundabout, there's a new roundabout at the corner of university, uh, no, sorry, uh, Fearing Street and whatever the street that- University. Is that University Drive? No. Yeah, University Street. There's a new roundabout that is so tiny that you have to slow down to way below the speed limit because if you don't slow down to, to way below the speed limit, you can't make the curve that is that roundabout. Um, I know because I was trying to go the speed limit down through that roundabout and almost <laughs> very seriously screwed it up. Um, so my concern is with all of the new roundabouts that seem to be popping up everywhere, why roundabout? Why not just add in the yeah. things that, you know, change the sidewalks, make the area nicer, make it prettier. That I've never gotten stuck at that light that light is not it's not causing a huge traffic jams it's a relatively quiet area i mean and i know that i understand that you're trying to increase traffic because you want to make the night the area nicer but why roundabout why is that the thing why can't there just be a nicer intersection well yeah. people do feel that roundabouts allow you know continuous traffic through an intersection whereas a, a stop stop light requires that people stop, and then um, there is actually a backup in the afternoon. People going southbound through this intersection, they back up all the way past Ron Verdier's what is it called Amherst Office Park, preventing people from his office park from actually exiting their property because there's this queue of of traffic. The other thing is it um, it allows cars to sit and idle and um, therefore they emit, you know, carbon. And so that's something that can be avoided. The other thing is that um, traffic signals are um, sort of uh, difficult to maintain. 
And so roundabouts not having traffic signals, except if you have the manually operated uh, stop for someone who is disabled or um, visually impaired to cross the street. Um, there's no, there's not a need to keep um, maintaining the traffic lights. Um, but I think mainly it's the fact that it allows the continuous flow of traffic and people don't have to yeah. stop unless there's someone in a, in the crosswalk or whatever. Um, so that's, that's my understanding of why someone would want to install a roundabout as opposed to a cross intersection. Um, okay. And there are definitely arguments in, in favor of the cross intersection. I think it actually makes a better um, village center overall. It uh, mm -hmm. allows yeah. the development of the four corners to be um, more natural. Once you put a roundabout in, it makes the corners a little bit more difficult to develop. And we're hoping that there will be development in this village center. So that's something that we're considering as well. Okay. So, um, I, I, this is Saran. I use that intersection a lot. It's close to where I live. And, uh, but I don't use it during the traffic hours, maybe around 4.30 or so, but there isn't really much of any way time. You know, like when I come from the Pomeroy Lane, if I need to make a left turn for Atkins, it's just a few minutes, you know, and I go to the gas station at that corner all the time. So that's the one I use. But uh, the roundabout, if you're going to do that, you have to take some land from where the gas station is and where the valley transporter is, where the, in front of CBs to make the roundabout, space for the roundabout. And I roundabouts are very good for very traffic areas to ease the traffic flow. But in my opinion, it will create another issue. I was involved when we were looking into the roundabout by Atkins. And one of the big issues we raised continuously was if we are shopping at Atkins, and if they had other stores across the street on the other side on 116, how are people going to go there? That was never answered very well. So if we take this roundabout here, I know that there there's Mission Cantina CBs there. They're very really popular eating places. And then El Camelito on this side, the wet Pomeroy Lane side. So there'll be lots of pedestrian crossings. And with the roundabouts, whatever you do, I don't really see a good solution. And my recommendation would be to enhance the, the signals right now, putting more pedestrian controlled access and bicycle lanes rather than the roundabout. Thank you. Uh, Lisa um, has raised her hand. Yeah. Um, am I unmuted? Wait a minute. We can hear yeah, you. Yes. OK. Um, I'm going to weigh in as a legally blind person using a guide dog and sometimes a white cane. Um, I really rely on my ears and listening to when traffic stops and starts. And I don't. I would like to see the enhanced thing. I understand um, the positive things about a roundabout. I'm learning a lot about that, but I feel that I don't think, for me personally, as a person with a disability, I'm not comfortable crossing an intersection when there's still ongoing traffic and really not being able to visually gauge um, who's coming from what direction, how fast and, yeah. You know, not having somebody, I really rely on, even on regular crosswalks in town, people fly right by and yeah. thank God my guide dog is, is trained to do what they call um, this disobedience thing where the intelligent disobedience where, you know, she'll stop me if a car is coming, but it's, it, it, I feel, I don't feel safe on a roundabout. I think I would just not do it. So yeah. that's, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I would rather see the cross signals and the, the you know, um, crosswalks and traffic lights and auditory, definitely, audio. Thank you. Yeah, that's just, um, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. There you go. Uh, and you made perfect sense. 
Um, and yeah. uh, we Thanks. do have a member of the public um, that would like to um, speak. Um, Myra, uh, are you okay with that? I think it's Mike. Sure. Is no. that Mike? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Uh, whoops. I pressed the wrong button. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, you should be able to talk in a second. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Hi there. Um, sorry, I'm going to start my video here. I'm in my car, so I apologize. Uh, I'm, I'm on the road today. Um, I'm an orientation mobility specialist, so I work with people like um, the person who just spoke um, on crossing streets. A lot of what I do is teaching people to cross streets. And <clears throat> uh, from my experience, especially when I'm working with someone who's totally blind, um, it, it, generally, I mean, I know that I've heard of crash statistics where the crash statistics don't indicate that it is a problem for people who have no vision. But um, as the previous speaker just said, um, in my experience and the people that I talk to who teach what I teach, um, generally people avoid these intersections. So, uh, you know, I think those statistics are probably misleading and, you know, we'll look for a different route. Sometimes it, it can take, you know, several blocks to get around something like that, um, depending on where you are. But um, the consensus that I have from people uh, with visual impairments is that, you know, some people have low vision that might be able to navigate them a little bit better. Um, but being totally blind, uh, there's several problematic things. One is, you know, just maintaining your orientation and making sense of what's going on when there's cars going around in a circle uh, next to you. It's very difficult to pinpoint, uh, you know, where things are and make those decisions. So, um, what, you know, what I found is, is generally a case of avoidance, uh, when people come across those intersections, they just don't want to deal with them because they're too, they're too scary. They're dangerous. And, um, cause it's very difficult to make sense of what's going on. So, um, that's been my experience, you know, as an instructor and the feedback I've gotten from people, um, has been consistent with what, um, sorry, how do I pronounce your name? Is it Elise or Elise? I haven't met it's, you. It's Elise. I think I did meet you once. I might have met you on the yeah. street. Uh, I was, yeah, okay. with, with well, my anyways, dog. Nice yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. and uh, so that's been my experience, and that's that is my opinion based on the people I've talked to, the people I've worked with, other people that teach what I teach. Um, it's it's very very consistent, and um, so that's that's my two cents. Um, we do have another uh, gentleman that's on here. Um, his name is Richard Mallett, and he said he, he was interested in speaking uh, because he does have to go down to Amherst quite a bit for his doctor and things like that. So um, that's that's my take on it. If uh, for what it's worth, I'd be happy to, you know, speak again on it. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you Thank think, you. Um, you bet. We have an um, we have a public comment period, which is far away, but can we let this person speak in the middle of this? I don't know this person. He's a, he's a dog user as well. So I don't know if he okay. could offer. Uh, so if, you, if you're calling in and you would like to speak, uh, you should press star nine, I think. I think it's star nine. Okay. Um, hello, can you uh, state your name? You're muted, Rick. So I've asked him to, uh, I asked him to unmute himself. Is star nine the unmute? Yeah. Uh, he might be star six. That'd be star six. I forget what star six is. Um, one of them is raise hand and one of them is unmute and I never know which is which. I think it's star six to mute and unmute. Well, so this person is an attendee and I think that I I it I have a button that says ask to unmute. So I think this oh. person needs to. Oh, that's a good point. Um, uh, could you press star uh, six? Let's see if that works. Yes, it did. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, great. Okay. Hi. Can Hi, you say your name? I haven't seen her in a long time. What is your yeah. last name? Uh, Mally. Mally. Hi, Rick. Hi, <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Hi, well, Rick. It's Tori. I, I, I just had a couple of comments. 
uh, as a visually impaired uh, uh, person who uses a guide dog, um, I rely on audible signals. And the first question I have is a roundabout is continuous traffic. And you're talking about pedestrians. How does that work if it's continuous traffic? How does, how does a pedestrian cross? So that's something to think about. So you're going to have to have something for pedestrians to cross. So audible signals uh, are excellent. Um, I really rely on them. Uh, I live right here on the edge of Amherst and Hadley. Um, and uh, I lived in Alaska for many years. And uh, one of the things they didn't have was audible signals. So uh, it was dangerous. Um, and uh, risked my life many times just crossing in a crosswalk. Um, but I had to go to work, so I had to do it. Um, so I really support audible signals. Um, the o &M, Mike, the O&M guy, uh, he, he was pretty clear. It's, 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 it's much easier to train somebody on a, an accessible pedestrian uh, path of travel than it is to a roundabout. Um, Another comment I wanted to make was I was listening to the meeting earlier is uh, in the library, has anybody maybe thought about an evacuation chair near the elevator as an option, um, as well as the door and bell thing? Um, I, I've, I know in the state buildings they have evacuation chairs from the second floor up. So it's, a, it's an option. The AAB does allow them. Um, so it's an option they might want to think about uh, and I'm not talking about one that climbs stairs by itself. There's much more right. affordable options, evacuation chairs. And nobody knows better how to get in and out of their chair than the person who's using the chair. So um, they could tell people how to help and things like that. So that that's another option. But I just want to put my two cents in there. And uh, many, many years ago, I served on the Amherst Commission. So uh, probably 20 years ago. Um, and I just want to say hi to Soren too. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much for your Thank comments. You. Thank you. And um, nice to meet another dog user. <laughs> okay. So right. um, I, I didn't, uh, I've been, um, Darcy has been communicating with me. She's the head of the TSO from the town council and she's been um, communicating with me. She did not, communicate with me that they that we weren't supposed to come up with any suggestions um, that she was slowing this down that's not something I ever heard from her so if it's new it's new um, I know there are public hearings on the 25th and 27th um, that the TSO is going to run one is a Thursday evening one is a Saturday afternoon um, and I had told her that we would be sending her some kind of recommendations after this meeting um, and it, you know because she asked me to um, and so I I don't know if we have recommendations although it seems like our recommendations are um, that people on this committee for a variety of reasons would prefer an enhanced signalized intersection um, because it it feels better um, it seems safer to cross with sound it feels more like a community um, there would need to be more sidewalks and stuff like that. Um, I don't. Um, I don't know what we're supposed to do exactly because I got a set of instructions from Darcy and they seem to be different now. My Myra, um, uh, well, um, Chris Brestrup has raised her hand. Perhaps okay. she can help okay. guide us here. I would say that if you have, you know, strong comments and you want to um, recommend um, that there not be around about, that's perfectly up to you. I, I just wanted to let you know that the, um, the pace of this has been slowed down a bit. I think the, the town manager and the town council have kind of realized that there's no, um, there's not as much urgency in getting to an answer quickly as there is a desire to hear from a lot of different people and get to the correct answer eventually. And so the town council will probably be voting in June about this. Um, and so there is time to, um, to put forth your recommendations. Um, I think Myra 
is perfectly right to say that she wants to respond to Darcy's request. And if you want to respond in a fashion that says, this group strongly supports a signalized intersection, that's fine. I wanted to probe a little bit more though, and to find out if there are there things that you like about this place, this Pomeroy Village intersection, um, and what specifically do you not like? And um, how can we incorporate those ideas into our plan, whichever plan is eventually chosen? So um, since we literally have only two or three minutes left, yeah. um, uh, do folks want to uh, make a motion um, if you have any strong feelings uh, uh, or any, you know, recommend, do you have any recommendations, specific recommendations that you would like to forward? Or to, preferences. Or preferences, preferences that yeah. you would want yeah. to pass yeah. along to the TSO and then we could certainly continue this conversation in future meetings. So if you have new new recommend or added recommendations, you know, we can certainly capture that in the future. Mm -hmm. But uh, would would folks want to uh, make any recommendations today or would you or uh, we could hold off until the next time? Do you think it would be okay for us to wait until April 13th, which is our next meeting? Um, is that right? But uh, then we'll be the recreating the wheel, yeah. right? Say that again, please. Then won't we be recreating the wheel? Maybe we can just say in our meeting, we looked at it, but we will look at it again, but then we can say, um, it seems like the committee is more leaning toward enhanced signaling and in addition to um, pedestrian uh, controlled signals and bike lanes and sidewalk improvement. Maybe leave it like that, but. We could, Marty hasn't spoken on it. I wondered if you have an opinion. Um, hmm. I do have an opinion. It's slightly different than yours probably, but um, I think either option is probably a good option, but whichever option is chosen must have pedestrian signalization, whether it be the roundabout or the um, enhanced signalization. Um, okay. So either option is fine for you, but you recommend that there's- And they must have pedestrian controls. You've got a lot of kids yeah. going through there. I was there yeah. through there yeah. yesterday and yeah. and there were kids and yeah. there's also a real problem turning uh, left from coming from town, turning left onto Pomeroy Lane. Um, it's people going to the Montessori school. Um, but I know I was behind, I must've been there right when they were dropping kids off, but I was stuck behind. I, they couldn't make a left-hand turn. I stuck through the light twice. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps if, um, since we are, it's one o'clock now, perhaps uh, since it, this is, you know, obviously really nice and fresh in everyone's mind, I, I uh, would recommend that if folks have individual thoughts about current conditions and what they would like to see there, uh, and if you want to weigh in about, you know, either design alternative to email me while it's fresh in your mind. And at the next meeting, we will regroup and um, make and the board can um, make recommendations together. Does that does that uh, make sense? Yeah. So people can email Maureen. Um, and then if if you want to send me the emails that you get, I can see if I can put together a statement that we can work off of um, sure. at the next meeting. Good idea. Um, and I can let Darcy know that we met, that we discussed it. There is universal agreement here that whatever they do, it has to be pedestrian activated signals. There have to be, it has to be signalized. Um, Absolutely. Whether it's, whether it's an intersection, or whether it's a roundabout, it has to have signals. Um, and they, I sort of heard Chris say that would be for later, um, sort of like 
maybe the intention was for the one at Triangle Street to be for later. So I don't think we mean it to be for <laughs> later. I think we mean it to be when the job is completed, it's there. Is that right? The I didn't really mean it be for later. I just uh, was thinking of it as a detail, but I think it's more than a detail for you. So put that in. That's a very important thing for you to make a statement about. And um, well, I think it's I think it's the collective you. Yes, it I, should I think be everybody incorporated. on the committee said oh, yeah. that. Yep. So it should be incorporated into the um, design is what you're saying. And I, yeah. I didn't mean the collective you. <clears throat> it did. Okay. 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 All right. Um, um, does so, that sound yeah, good? So everyone will the... email me your thoughts and uh, yes. I will forward mm -hmm. them off to Myra and then we'll regroup with this item uh, at our April 13th meeting. Okay. Sounds this is good. good. And I okay. also want to just point out that this is great um, to hear from this committee because in fact, the federal leg legislation, the federal regulations are going to change at some point in the not too distant future when they get through their bog backlog of regulations that they need to look at. But the, the federal government knows that roundabouts that are not signalized are a serious problem. And they have promulgating uh, potential regulations for consideration and they wanna to get to them. I sent that to you, um, um, Maureen sent it to you yesterday, I think. So. If we were to do this, at least it would be in keeping with upcoming federal regulations. Right now, there aren't any that require them, but there will be. Good. In, uh, we are running late. I, I do okay. feel uh, badly. Yep. Um, if, if we could just, um, there is another person on the phone. I, I don't know if uh, we, we do need to hold our public comment, general oh, co right. public That's comment right. period. Okay. So if anyone from the public um, wishes to speak for th up to three minutes, uh, you can press star nine, I think. Is it star nine? Six. Six? Star, star six? Six, I think. Star I think six. six. Might be six. Star six. OK. Is there someone there? There is someone there, but they haven't indicated if they want to speak or not. Um, so maybe they're just listening in. Um, all right. Well, um, seeing that no one from the public has wishes to speak, um... can I make a two two minute comment myself? Sure. Okay. Uh, Rick Malley said evacuation chairs for the library, and it was a suggestion. I know evacuation chairs because in my prior job there was one place for my, and there's another person in a wheelchair to use. But the person is, if there is only the librarian there and the person with the disability there, there is no way the person can transfer herself into the evacuation chair. They need some support. So in a small library, which they don't have too many staff members that can assist, I don't think that would be very functional, but that's my opinion, so. Hmm. I agree. I agree yeah. with Saren. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. well, that's great to know, because now we don't have to tell the other Chris that we had another idea. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It won't work, I mean, in a small place. <laughs> They're also dangerous. They're very dangerous. Yeah, I would not feel You've comfortable. You've got to have somebody that's really strong and to operate them. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Oh, yeah. The cultural. Um, does anybody want to be a representative from this committee to I do. the arts? You do? I'll do it. Oh, great. I'll it. forward you the email. So okay, I, thanks. I, I just received the email yesterday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the Amherst Public Art Committee is forming a subcommittee and they would like to discuss uh, public art and accessibility. And they asked if a member from, from the DAAC could attend their March 28th meeting starting at six. So I'll forward I think it's you the- March 18th. March, yeah, thank you, March 18th, yep. Is there anybody besides uh, Marty who would like to do it? I would like to listen in on that. Okay. I'm good, uh, thank you very much. Thank Take you, care. Mike. Oh, thank Bye. you, Mike. Thank you. 
Thank yeah. you. I didn't realize you were still there. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. So, Elise, um, you would like to, you would like not to be the representative, but you would like to participate? Yeah. I, yeah, I would like to listen in on that. Okay, sure. I will forward you both the email yeah. and okay. so you can um, touch base with, with that chair. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. That's great. Okay, yeah. so um, this is great. I hope that everybody will take a couple minutes just to, you don't have to write like a, a, a literate letter. Mm -hmm. You can just send bullet points to Maureen about what you think. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything that you spend a lot of time on, just as long as you get your thoughts on paper and, well, electronic paper, and send them to Maureen. And if she sends them to me, I'll try to make some sense out of them so we have something to work with. Thank you very much for entertaining sure. this subject. We appreciate oh, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you for coming. Bye-bye. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye, Chris. All right. Uh, well, okay. motion motion right. adjourned. Um, I don't know if we, we formally need to do a roll call. So. I don't think so either. I don't think Except so. that we never found Ruth. We didn't. <laughs> well, hopefully, Ruth, please email me um, if you have any comments uh, for today's meeting. And I'm sorry, your, your audio is not working. All right, right, folks. Thank you, folks. That was a lot to think Thank about. You. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.